Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Today we're joined by the top guns of Malaysian civil society. We have C4 Center Director Cynthia Gabriel and Bercy 2.0 Chairperson Maria Chin Abdullah. We're here to discuss a very complex issue. To put it simply, um, funds associated with 1MDB were confiscated by Swiss authorities um, investigating allegations of money laundering. These guys over here are planning to return the money to Malaysia and distribute it to ordinary Malaysians. It sounds like a massive task, so how do you plan to do this? <laughs> yeah, it does sound really like a massive task, but uh, firstly, thank you very much, uh, Kini TV, for having us. Um, and uh, the time is also very timely, because tomorrow is uh, World Anti-Corruption Day, uh, and around the world, uh, people commemorate this day by either exposing more scandals or trying to find solutions to fight uh, corruption. And it's also very um, timely that the next day is World Human Rights Day. So the link between corruption, human rights, democracy and good governance are all very intricately tied together. So it's really uh, essential that um, we speak to Malaysians today and via Kini TV uh, on the issue of recovery of stolen assets. So if you look at the United Nations Anti-Corruption Convention, uh, Chapter 5 of that convention explicitly mm. talks about asset recovery. So it is a very important chapter because normally victims of corruption are, are faceless, uh, it's population, yeah. societies, communities, and you can't say I'm individually affected. But in the work of asset recovery, uh, the victims become real. It's the people, the society that normally gets uh, completely devastated, and more so if you're impoverished and poor, because that's where it felt the worst, you know, allocations meant for you, uh, yeah. siphoned off for personal gain, and so on. So in this case, uh, the 1MDB, uh, very recently at the Global Forum on Asset Recovery, uh, had actually talked about 1MDB and the Attorney General of the United States yeah. termed it as kleptocracy at its worst. Yeah. So one uh, very clear objective was actually to alert GIFA, the Global Forum on Asset Recovery, that uh, that's so much of money that's frozen out there which belongs to Malaysian taxpayers and it's actually public funds that have been uh, stolen and needs to be returned. So uh, the process in the lead up to GIFA, if I can just give you a little bit of background, was that 1MDB was actually meant to be included as a case study. Uh, but in the way the World Bank works, they have to work with the government of the day. And so uh, there was no real uh, acknowledgement or response from the Malaysian government, so they couldn't include it in the case. And we felt that it was really unfortunate uh, that such a big global forum was taking place and the 1MDB is touted as the largest kleptocracy case there is at the moment. But how come it's not being included? Because in the United States, it was found out that 4.5 billion US dollars is actually missing, lost. And out of that, 1.7 billion uh, are found to be stolen assets in the United States alone. Uh, now, the work that we're trying to uh, do together, uh, Bursay, C4, and about mm -hmm. 112 civil society <coughs> organizations, is to focus on Switzerland, where another big chunk of funds are uh, frozen and located. Is that a reason you're focusing on Switzerland and not the US? Because US appears to have a bigger chunk of 1MDB funds. So why Switzerland though? Well, Switzerland is because we also have um, good relations with the civil society groups okay. in Switzerland and they have also alerted us of uh, some sections of Swiss law that speaks about uh, the need to return stolen assets um, and Switzerland is a financial hub in Europe so a lot of people deposit, uh, rich people deposit their, their finances there so in, in the case of 1MDB uh, the um, accounts of uh, Goodstar, which finally we found out through the trail of investigations yeah. that the beneficial owner of Goodstar was actually Joe Lowe and not uh, uh, a company. So he was the beneficial owner and a lot of that money, the one billion that was invested in Petro Saudi, 
seven hundred million U.S. dollars was siphoned off into Goodstar, and that money was actually uh, deposited in the banks in Switzerland mm -hmm. uh, and in the U.K. and a few others. So, we are hoping that whatever we started mm -hmm. with Switzerland could also be emulated with the United States and with um, the United Kingdom yeah. and wherever the jurisdictions are. But we've started with Switzerland because uh, of the links with uh, some local civil society groups there that have alerted us of Switzerland's moral and legal responsibilities to return the money and uh, what it would take for that to happen. Because if the money is frozen there for too long, uh, there's a part of mm -hmm. the uh, law that says that it could be uh, absorbed back into Swiss Okay. Financial coffers. So oh, I money. understand how the banks are currently appealing yes. it as well. So how long do you have to wait until you can sort of start the process? I think it's a very long, windy road. So it's kind of tricky though. You, you have a long road ahead, but you have to do it within seven years. Yeah. Okay. So one example, uh, one concrete thing that came out of GIFA was the, the case of Nigeria. So Nigeria was ruled by a despot for very long, uh, Abacha. So he had stolen a lot of property, uh, deposited mm -hmm. his property in Switzerland, in the United <coughs> Kingdom and so on. And um, now, after so many years, and with regime change, if I must uh, emphasize that, uh, the process has become smoother and there's a light at the end of the tunnel now that the new uh, Nigerian government is actually trying to seek the stolen assets to be returned. And at GIFA, they actually signed a memorandum of understanding that the Swiss authorities will return 321 million Swiss francs, mm. 321 million Swiss francs, back to Nigeria in stages mm. which will be monitored by the World Bank. So what I understand is the Malaysian government needs to be on board as well. You can't kind of bypass the Malaysian government at this point, can you? Well, I guess uh, they have been asking Malaysia for information. Mm -hmm. If you remember, it was reported some yeah, last yeah. year. Yeah, they uh, have made two attempts at least, but there's no response from the Malaysian government. So, of course, the money is not here. Mm -hmm. The money is in Switzerland and, not, and the um, Attorney General has just gone ahead to do what he's supposed to do. That's his role and responsibility, which is good because then it um, recovered some of the money. It, this is not the full amount, yeah? Right. Uh, this is only partial of the money. And, and, um, but I think that what it's sending a message is that you cannot just use any country to launder your money. Yeah? And why we are in this is, one is the money, two is really is about good governance. Yeah? We can't be allowing um, the management uh, of our funds be used to actually for personal gains mm -hmm. and particularly I think that you know uh, Bursay has highlighted that um, it cannot be used to actually um, influence election. So what I've learned so far you as an NGO I think you've written to the Swiss government about this have you gotten a response so far? Um, well, the Swiss government has acknowledged uh, receipt of our letter. They have not given us a reply yet, so we're still waiting. Yeah. And I think uh, it will be difficult for them to give a reply now when the investigations are still going on. Uh, they might acknowledge and so on, so we wait. Uh, but it's also in interesting to see the actual uh, outcome of the uh, proceedings that are still going to take place. So in a sense, for this to move forward, the government either needs to admit that that is part of the stolen money or that someone is convicted. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. at this point, do you see any of that happening? Well, um, the US DOJ has started their criminal investigation, so hopefully that will help you know, facilitate another round of um, highlighting you know, who are the people that you know, are involved in the money laundering. So once somebody or some persons are caught, then at least uh, it will bring a different dimension to the case. Mm -hmm. So I think that eventually, if the uh, money were to actually return to Malaysia, there has to be a condition on the Malaysian government that they must recognize that um, not a mismanagement, you know, that this is actually money that has been laundered out from one MDB into personal 
accounts and into purchasing personal uh, properties, assets and all that. So that is uh, something that we hope that the Malaysian government will come round it. But uh, look as though it's very dim. <laughs> it's not so bright. <laughs> Uh, we want a clean government. We want our tax, pay, our tax money to be used responsibly. We elect you for a certain purpose. We don't elect you to steal. Yeah. We elect you to run the country properly. Mm. And so that should be the message. And that message has to come from the Malaysian people. And uh, the same message has to go to the opposition. Because I firmly believe, and I think that really is a message of per se also, that if whoever wins by cheating the system is not going to be able to come out and run a clean government. You need to have clean elections in order to have a clean government. Yeah. So if there's no electoral integrity and there's no uh, integrity in the democratic system, it's going to be extremely difficult to uh, have that aspiration that, okay, 2018 to 2023, we're going to have 30% uh, improvement or 50% improvement. It should start now. And every Malaysian voice actually counts. And especially the young people. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, the disillusionment is understandable, but really it's about um, there's no choice. We have to say what needs to be said. And it's not just me mm. and Maria Chin saying it, but it's the Malaysian people. And many people stood out. I mean, many brave people came out and got punished also as a result of that. But we're saying that we have to stand up, we have to be counted, we have to tell the people in power, if you want the mandate for the next five years, you've got to get your act together, tell us the truth, um, make your voices known. I tell you, after the election, vote, nobody is going to even bother. <laughs> right? Uh, everyone has to vote. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to end it here. Thank you so much, Cynthia yeah, and Maria, for joining you. us. Yeah. It was very insightful. So much to digest now. Thank you. <laughs>